Good morning and welcome to the Rhythm Notes of Health with me, Kai Ianta. I am the soul of public health. I'm very, very excited, but I'm always excited. You know, so she always says she's excited and I am, I'm always excited, but I'm excited today because we had so much to talk about with our men series, Mental Health Roadblock and Sex, um, the men's edition, that we had to bring our therapist back for a part two. So I'm so excited that I was able to fit into his schedule to get in a part two. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to bring in our therapist, Roderick Watkins. Let's bring him in. Good morning, Roderick. Hey. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was reading your thing when it says when it's bringing me into the meeting and you have my name spelled a little wrong. Oh, the um, the, <laughs> OK, I'll, I'll take care of that. But I can't see you. You can't see me or the, I okay. can't. There's an E missing. It's R-O-D-E-R-I-C-K. OK, and I'll and I'll take care of that. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. I am coming in, everybody. I'm trying to start the video. Y'all see how y'all see how y'all see how he is. He's 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 the way I am about my name, so I ain't mad at it. Okay, so we're gonna straighten that out. There's an E in his name, and let me get that right. Okay, because if somebody called me I A N A with no T, I was like, there's a T in my name. Okay, so <laughs> put that e in your name. Welcome back, Roderick. Welcome back, y'all. Y'all know this ain't even trying to say Mr. Watkins. Mr. Watkins, welcome back. <laughs> Try this I, we already went through this on the first first round, didn't we? Get so excited, it's just not going to happen. How are you today, this holiday weekend? Thank you so much for agreeing to come on. I, I said um, in the introduction, I was so excited, but I said, I always say I'm excited because, you know, I'm always excited that I can even just have the time with you to come on and kind of talk about these things that we have going on in our community to be better. Right. And, right. Um, you know, what, what, what we didn't see coming is, is that the part one was so good. And there were so many things that you talked about that I felt that we all, if I needed it, other, other people needed it. Right. So I wanted to make sure that we talked about those things. So we kind of, went over our time, we went well over our time. And then we have to have a part two to kind of address some things that I wanted to make sure that we talked about that was important. But last, last time, I always say when the therapist is on, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm on your sofa walking with you because before you said that, Hey, we were it's like, we were, we were walking. Right. So it's, I'm always excited to have a therapist on. And then when you talk about stuff that may be going on with me in my house, and you don't even know, I'd be like, Oh, I don't know if he's psychic. I don't know. Therapist, are psychic? Well, you are psychic in the ability that you 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 know you see the same situations with different people, and you kind of know what's going on. And if and and if the shoe fit, you know, put it on and wear. You know what I mean? So a, a hit dog will holler. A hit dog will holler. <laughs> that part, right? So thank you so much for coming back. I literally, it was so good. I literally have like two pages of notes from our last show, but to kind of talk about, you know, we're in this men's health series, um, prostate health and men's health. And we first talked about prostate and this uh, second now third is uh, mental health roadblocks and sex. And we talked about a lot of mental health roadblocks uh, that men may have and multi-dimensionals and sexual repression. And you also said this support is not fixing, right? But it's just that supporting. And so I wanted to bring you back and kind of talk about some other topics um, that we wanted to address in the mental health roadblocks. And I mm -hmm. think we talked about before, and we're not going to really go in so much to before because we're hoping that you listen to the part one um, so you can follow along with the with the part two. But what we talked about before, well, well Roger, before we do that, just let, let's, tell, let's tell everyone about you again, right? Okay. Who you are and what you do, and then we'll, and then we'll get started. So thank you. Sure. Uh, my name is Roderick Watkins. I'm a licensed professional counselor here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I currently have a private practice in Midtown. Um, I see uh, individual, I do individual counseling um, for people ages 18 and up. 
Uh, I see everything from mood disorders, which include depression and anxiety. I see people with uh, uh, substance use issues. I, I, uh, I specialize in the LGBT community and people of color, so I deal a lot with diversity. Uh, and my hope, uh, my, my purpose, I feel, is just to uh, show that compassion that uh, sometimes the world doesn't show us. Mm. And, and to teach people how to give that compassion to themselves. Mm. A, lot of, uh, a lot of times um, with mental health, uh, as we talked about before, uh, support is uh, very necessary during times when you don't think you have any. But uh, what I find in my practice, a lot of times is people don't know how to support themselves. Mm. And so uh, I, I extend my compassion and I model that support for themselves, that, that encouragement for themselves. And then I teach them how to ask for support and encouragement from other people when you're going through those difficult times. Hmm. I like that you said how to ask for support because most of us don't know how to ask for support, right? And so, especially as we talk about men, right? They're, they're, they're you know, we talked about it in the last show that men are kind of like, you know, I got on the Superman cape, I'm supposed to be all, and how dare I now need some support for something. Right. We noticed that we didn't say help, but we said support for something, right? Because what's the difference between the two words, Roderick, as we start to get into this mental health roadblocks and sex with men? Well, I, I, I think the uh, I think help and support have a lot of similarities, but I mm -hmm. think one of the connotations is uh, there's probably uh, more stigma uh, more stigma behind the word help as it feels like you're uh, uh, more of a victim, mm -hmm. whereas support sounds like you need you have a partner in it with you. Mm. Um, I like that. I like that. Support is more like a partner in it with you versus help. You're more like a victim. Right. And so right. and so your brain processes that different. So it's like, oh, somebody needs to rescue me versus someone needs to support me in what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, wow. That I, was good. While I'm, while I'm going through this, you know, I'm, I just need your assistance with these things. Hmm. Whereas help is help almost has a connotation of hopelessness to it. Uh, 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 uh. I'm writing this down because this is really <laughs> and truly, and I'm literally going to put something on my social media page about this um, help uh, versus support because that's really big. And I think as we learn to um, talk about terms and the meanings and how we approach them and utilize them in our day to day life, when we learn that certain words um, actually is going to take away from your your end goal, if you will, versus <laughs> if you understand that because if we don't understand that if we say i want to help you right if we say that to people let me know any way that i can help right and people normally say nope i'm not going to say anything i'm not i don't want any help as a, as as opposed to saying however i you know whatever you need for me to support you i'm here to do it that right. really well, changes what, part you, what, what part do you need me to pick up you know uh -huh. where can i pick up at uh -huh. you know i'm not i'm not saying you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing yeah <laughs> i'll make that clear I'm right Right. Yeah, because you yeah. said support is not fixing, right? Yeah. That's what you said before, support is not fixing. So men and mental health roadblocks. I, I, I just want to dive right in and tell a story because, and I told this person that I was going to tell this story, uh, of course, without using his name. So, and, 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 and this is going to kick it off to start from here. So just this week, I was talking to a friend of mine, right? And he is going through uh, a divorce. And so he has literally been out there, if you will, doing his thing, kicking around, right? And he mm -hmm. is uh, late 50s, right? So he could be in a little bit of menopause, you know, the slang word for it, um, or, or having testosterone depletion, if you will. He could mm -hmm. be a little bit there, but he he works out. And he and he talks about he has a very high sex drive, right? Mm -hmm. But he also says to me that he likes it sometimes when because he's on um, 
uh, uh, high blood pressure medication, right? He's a fit right. guy. He works out, but sometimes you just need the medication because it's hereditary and it's not getting better and your foods are not changing. So when you need medication, you just have to take those uh, medications, right? So we know right. that if you take, and I'm always talking to guys about their hypertension and their medications, because we know that it can cause uh, libido problems, right? Yes. And impotence. Yeah. Thank you. A uh, problems, right? Libido, libido too, but it's an impetus problem, right? <laughs> so if uh, I always talk to guys about that because I try, I tell them that if you are having this problem, you can go to your doctor and communicate with your doctor. So the doctor can now give you something that is not going to cause this because we know that if you listen to the first show, the prostate health, we know that there's um, one of the ways that erection is caused is from blood circulation. And so blood pressure medication or hypertension, hypertension medication may stop this, right? So he said that he takes his blood pressure medication and depending on what time of day he takes it, it mm. may cause this, uh, um, decrease in blood flow, right? And he, right. this is what he said. He said, when I'm out there too much, this, this is where his exact words, and I said, like, I promise you I'm going to talk about this on the show. <laughs> he said, when I'm out there too much, you know, hanging out with this girl, this girl, he's like, I'm just enjoying, I'm, I'm, I'm divorced, I'm single, and um, I'm just enjoying this new life of mine. And the women are just out here, and I'm just like here, and I'm there. He said, but when I, <laughs> he said, because I'm a man, when I want to slow down, what I do is I switch the time that I take my blood pressure medication, right? And he said, because what it does is it's going to slow me down. It not only um, it, it, he said it literally, and that's why I said libido early, because he said it literally takes away the libido because I now don't necessarily want to have sex. So he said it, the circulation may stop, but I, I also, I don't want to have sex, right? It's going to slow me down. So if somebody called him and be like, well, yeah, I wanted to come, but today is not going to be a good day. He said that's the only thing that slows him down, right? He said he, he, he doesn't want to say no, like, if because he said the moment that some female comes on to him or say something to him, like, come over, right? Because we were talking about how females are so different than we were when we were in college and we were younger, how they're so different, how they're they're aggressive and they're just like, I'm, come over, right? He said, but the mm -hmm. moment they say, come over, let's hang out, let's hook up, instantly he get this mental thought and then he's like, okay, I'm on my way or I'll meet you later or something, right? But he says that sometimes he just want to slow down. And he said his mind, his mental won't allow him to slow down. So the only thing that slows him down is for him to switch the time that he takes that blood pressure medication, right? So here I right. am saying if the blood pressure medication is causing this problem, then you need to talk to your doctor. So he has figured out that it's the... Um, larger dosage that causes like no type of sex drive right versus the um the the lesser dosage just causes sometimes it depending on what time he takes it to slow him down right and so mm -hmm. and so what i'm asking you because he's saying this is mental right so what i'm asking you is the uh, professional therapist here is that really a thing or is this his mental in telling him this and he says if i take this pill or do you actually think that that is literally happening to him where he is needing this medicine um to slow him down T -t speak on that uh, uh roger speak speak on that subject <laughs> yeah so uh i think you bring up impotence versus uh erectional uh you know uh erectile dysfunction or people mm -hmm. having difficulty bringing erections, right? And we were talking about the mind-body connection before, mm -hmm. and impotence is more of the desire not being there, whereas erectile dysfunction could actually be, you know, the medication itself. Mm -hmm. fact, and which he said he's having both. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And which he said he's having both. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's that mind-body disconnection, but the mind definitely does play in, um, play uh, a, a major part in regards to being able to maintain that erection or even getting one, mm -hmm. right? So he, if he's figured out how to, he he may have uh, he may have associated this with the medication, mm -hmm. or the medication itself could actually be, uh, you know, prohibiting him from gaining an erection, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it, uh, through working, I'm glad he has his doctor and he's working with his doctor, but they can they can determine that. So he that's why it's good to have a doctor and have a therapist, right? Absolutely. So you can get it from both angles. So you would work on you would you would talk with your doctor about the physical actually mm -hmm. getting an erection, and he can change the dosages of the medication. Whereas you would talk to your therapist in regards to any uh, anxiety that you're having before sex or performing performance anxiety. So mm -hmm. both of those things, 
uh, can, you know, lead to the issues that he's having right now. And you can, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times it is both of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, I was telling you, we're multidimensional. So usually it's more than one thing. We like to, as human beings, we sort of like to, we like to dissect things down to one thing, but it's rarely just one thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, when you think about all the stressors that you have going through your day or through your life, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, you may focus on your work as mm -hmm. being a primary issue, but it's really not. It's all those things. It's it's work, it's family, mm -hmm. it's it's, it's uh, finances, mm -hmm. it's spirituality. And, um, but you just singled it out on this one particular thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, what, I, what I tell people is like, just like we have a physical body, we have an emotional body. Mm -hmm. And that emotional body has to be worked out like your physical body. But mm -hmm. just like a physical body, let's say you're doing bench press or whatever type of weight you're lifting, mm -hmm. the more weight you pound on it, eventually that physical body is going to say, I can't take anymore. Yeah. And that's the same thing with stress. Mm -hmm. on on our emotional bodies we have mm -hmm. you know you can think of them sort of like these emotional muscles and so you got you got work you got your family you got mm -hmm. your finances you got mm -hmm. your career all these things all those things are weight and they're mm -hmm. adding on and you may not think you may think your family like you may rate your family satisfaction as as a five five being the highest and you may mm -hmm. rate your career as three mm -hmm. meaning that you want some change but guess what? Both of those things are contributing to the anxiety and stresses that you're dealing yeah, with. Yeah, I agree. That, that that That's a very good point that you talk about the multi, because, you know, for me, because we, we talked about before how, you know, I'm very conscious and I'm all, I, I try to pimp, what I try and pinpoint is how, what I'm feeling. Uh, if I'm yeah. feeling some way um, that's lesser than what I think I should feel with my high energy or somewhere close to my high, high energy. I try and figure out like, why, why are you, wait, what happened today? Why are you feeling that way? Right. And like you said, or something, if an incident happens, if I'm in a meeting with someone and something that someone says uh, triggers me, right. And I feel a certain way when they say that I later go back and say, why did you feel that way when they said that? Right. Why did you feel the way that you felt? And what I always conclude is, is that it wasn't the person, what they said, it's some back stuff. Cause before we talked about those imprints, you know, you talked about those imprints. It's some, it's something that happened before that's triggering. This person has said something and this is being triggered from what they said before or what happened before. Right. And then now I can process, oh, I'm feeling like this because I felt this way before. And now the, here it is again in a different way. And because I didn't resolve that feeling, right, to say I'm feeling this way, how do you resolve that when it comes back up? Because we talked about that on the last show. When it well, comes back how, up, how do you ready. resolve that? How do you resolve that? So I go back to I go back to the feeling that originally had me there because that's where I normally go back to like because I have to figure out like why do you feel like that about this and then I realize it's the continuation of doing something I literally just said said today that you know my husband often say that a part of my uh, problem of letdown is that I have these um, um what, do, what do you call it I have uh uh, not anticipation, but I have uh, expectations of what should be, right? So because I have expectations of what should be, when those things don't, don't occur in the expectation that I have, then I'm let down about a lot of situations, right? So you let down, but how do you get back up? I, I get back up by just really processing how did I feel that way? And, and then kind of just writing down, like this made me feel like that and thinking about it. And I always say my God mind is early in the morning or... Um, in the shower, right? That's my God mind. That's when I'm thinking, that's when th things are clear. And sometimes I have to wait until I get in the shower or if it's early in the morning to even get to that mind to decipher, how do I feel? And the way that I resolve that is just by saying, I'm, I'm not going to put myself in this, have that expectation. So I won't have the let down really and truly that's my resolve. So I guess okay. resolving that in that entity would be just to alleviate the expectation and then when i alleviate the expectation then i don't so, have to worry about the letdown which is good right you're letting go of the expectation and you're 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 letting but i, I want you to even take it further right mm -hmm. i want you to reframe that whole thing i want mm -hmm. I, I i want you to uh to to look at the good in this situation as to why this was exposed to you right uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or, or or why this is triggering you and then realize oh this is an opportunity for me to grow yeah. And in okay. That, and, and in that, um, 
And in that growth is realizing, ooh, there are other paths that I don't see yet. And maybe that's where that uncomfortableness is coming from. Mm, I'm so mm. used to seeing things a different way. Maybe this is my opportunity to go down a new path before. Mm. I tell people uncomfortableness and tension, sometimes they represent an area that you haven't been at before. Because mm. if you haven't been there before, you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And so instantly we go back to expectation because it's more comfortable to us. And for some people, that's pain. Mm, 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 mm. Right. But yeah. if you stay in that uncomfortableness and you realize I'm OK, this is just a feeling it'll pass. Yeah. It's take, it's allowing you to go down a new direction you haven't go before, thereby changing how you normally respond to things and react towards things. Yeah, no, 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 that's really good. And so that's probably why that guy is doing what he's doing. So we're, as we uh, talk about mental health roadblocks and sex with men. So yes, you know, let's get back to that. About his performance. <laughs> it's easy to digress because, you know, I told you I could be like, I'm sitting on your sofa. So but but again, everybody can use these things, these 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 tools that you're giving. If even if you give them to me, they can use them for themselves to decipher and and resolve things, right? But so when when we were talking about even him talking about his um, thought process that I'm going through a divorce, um, I'm single, I just kind of want to get out there, and I don't tell people no. If they call me and they say come over, I'm coming over. Like that is a part of the social background. If ground, if you will, of what men should do when women say, hey, let's hook up, right? That's part yeah. of their, their and, and in that case, there are roadblocks in that too, correct? There are roadblocks in that, but I like that he's doing that. So we have this thing, uh, there's a- You like uh, the part that he not saying no? What part, you, huh? look, what part you like that he not saying no? What part? That he's actually still uh, uh, going over there. And, and, you know, he's if these women are asking him to come over, that he's still taking a chance to go on over oh, there. Oh, so you and like I, the fact that he's doing that? Okay. Yeah, and okay. I'll tell you why. Yeah, tell and me why. Tell, tell me why. why. Yeah, this because so. This is a man so, series <laughs> with, a man, with a man here. So, so what? why now? No. Well, OK, so we have this thing called, if, if there's fear holding him back, right? Uh -huh. We have this thing called exposure therapy, where you expose yourself a little bit to the fear, the fear that you have so that you can get through it, right? So he's, uh -huh. he's sort of he's sort of reprogramming himself that he doesn't have anything to fear. Also, it gives him an opportunity to explore what really makes him feel good, right? So we talked about that mind-body connection, mm -hmm. right? So uh, by him going over there and by him having these opportunities, it gives him a chance, you know, maybe he has to invest more in foreplay with these women before mm -hmm. he can get his arousal to where he needs it to be. But it gives mm -hmm. him a chance to verbalize what he really needs physically. Mm -hmm in order to get to that point. And it gives him an opportunity to see like, if this is a potential somebody that he can deal with, mm -hmm. right? Because so if sex, she's willing to- So the sex, because maybe I just, maybe you think that they're just going over- Or maybe, I, miss, pity maybe pat. I misheard you. I'm yeah, maybe you think he's just going over to play pity pat. No, he's single. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm acting like a, a, a <laughs> objective here. <laughs> we might have got, we might have got distracted. We might have got off someplace. So let's see if we no, can no. think so, about. No, no. So, 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 so he's single. He's, you know, he's single. And he's newly single. He's, you know, he's just going through a divorce, and he is, you know, dating. He's on his dating app, and these women are wanting him to come right. over, you know, for sex, right? And so, right. Because remember, and, and so you're saying that it's good that he's going over for the sex with the women. Yes. Oh, okay. Why do you I have an issue? With <laughs> I'm not. I'm being objective. I'm not saying I have an issue with it because I don't uh -huh. have it. I mean, I really enjoy hearing the story. That's. I mean, that's just the type of person I am. I kind of like stories like that. But that's a whole other conversation. And maybe I need to be sitting on your sofa about that. But I kind of like the story. That's probably why he tells me this stuff, right? But no, I don't think that it's anything wrong wrong with him going over there. I just maybe I thought you as a therapist would think that it was something wrong with him going to these, you know, these women at call. But if you're, if you're saying that, you know, you're a man and that's why we got men on here for the, for the men series. If you're a man and you're saying there's, there's nothing wrong with that because he's single and these are grown ups and they're saying come over and he's saying, I'm going over, then that's good. Then I'm, I'm not saying I have a problem with that at all. Like I'm yeah. saying, I'm just asking you because I'm I just mean, trying to think in, of what people context, are asking, right? Context. In context, are you worried about your friend exposing his issues to these women or that these women would reject him because of the issues that he's having? 
no, I'm not worried about none of that. I just want to bring it to the show because he's, he's because of his age. And, um, and he was talking about the things that slow him down because otherwise he yes. cannot say no to slow himself down without taking his blood pressure medication at a certain time. Right. So I, yeah. I literally, my thought process was this has something to do with mental health roadblocks. Right. Because the fact that he doesn't even feel like he can say no himself without taking it. Ah, I got you. Okay. So now I see where you're going with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think a lot of men define themselves by their sexual prowess. Mm -hmm. I think it's common in our society mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, but again, you know, him going over and dating women or having sex with women, like it, 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 another consenting adult, mm -hmm. and he's not using his uh, issues with impotency or erectile dysfunction to stop him. I think those are good things. Mm -hmm. Now, if he does feel that he's doing this at the detriment of himself, mm -hmm. then there's an issue, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. if, 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 if he is, let's say, he's going over these women, but he knows he's supposed to be at work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that something is really going to impact his life in a way that's mm -hmm. not healthy for him or going with these women and doing this and his, his doctor has advised it not to because of his health. Mm -hmm. If it impacts him in those ways that are negative towards his life, mm -hmm. then yes, he needs to reconsider those things. But if this is just two consenting adults and it's actually helping him in some sense in dealing with these mental health roadblocks mm -hmm. regarding is uh regarding sex then by all means do that okay i like that i like i like that you said it now you know it's gonna be some people that'll be like well roger said and then it's gonna be some people that say that and he's a therapist and so the men are gonna say what well, what i'm doing is check mark i should be doing and so well, i like that that you're like giving definition into the reasons why it may if yeah. it's causing if it's causing something in your life to now shift or you're not able to have completion or you're not able to do things you need to do, then you need to think about what you're doing, right? It's the same I thing as with alcoholism, right? Men, yeah, I have men come to me all the time about addiction issues or thinking they're addicted to porn or mm -hmm. masturbation or anything mm -hmm. like that. But addiction is a serious, just like any diagnosis, diagnosis mm -hmm. are serious labels. And yes, we can all have some symptoms of addiction, of oppression and different things we can all over. But sometimes what they're talking about is overindulgent or they have a negative perception of something that they're doing. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 it's not impacting your health, mm -hmm. uh, your job, your uh, <clears throat> your mental well-being, your finances. Mm -hmm. You know, then you have to reconsider. I had somebody uh, just recently. I had somebody. They're very concerned about how often, and this comes up frequently for men, but how often they might masturbate or something like that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And then, I, so I told, you know, I, I told them, are you leaving your job in the middle of the day or something to go masturbate? Are you masturbating at your job or what are you doing? Why do you feel this is such an addiction? Mm -hmm. And then he's, he's just like, well, I was always told these particular things about masturbation. So he has this negative connotation and immediately is escalated to something. So it's mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, we were talking about giving yourself compassion for some mm -hmm. of the things. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, sexual addiction is very real. Addiction mm -hmm. is a very real thing. But mm -hmm. again, I think uh, uh, we as people, especially now that psychology is so in the forefront, mm -hmm. you know, of our, of our media and everything like that, that the lay person or the amateur just looks at one uh, one symptom, but doesn't realize there's a whole other components that go into diagnosing somebody. There's the uh, duration that this particular issue has been going on. There's the frequency that this is particular issue is going on. Mm -hmm. There are other symptoms associ associated with the symptom that you're having that have to mm -hmm. go on before it can qualify as an actual addiction or psychological diagn psychiatric diagnosis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a lot of times uh, people don't have that information and so they should go to a therapist and talk about these things yeah yeah no that, no 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 you bring a good point up point up point about that and so with that you know and the way that that men's thought processes is i like that you talked about the masturbation thing and the up um and, and what men think about it and what they've been told and when it's normal when it's abnormal because in in our women's series this is why we're doing the men's series because in our women's series we literally talked about you know we had a 
show called uh, Masturbation Is It For Us or Our Spouses. And it was literally to take out the myth of pleasuring yourself as a bad thing because like exactly. literally for me, you know, I, I often say I'm from Mississippi and you know, the, the way I was raised, nobody talked about masturbation. It was like, just don't go out and get pregnant, right? And so even, even, even with that, before the I was on a ther the therapist show listening just watching her show because we were going to be doing another, another show and and she said to me um hey I see I, I see you on my show I'll be on there to see, do your little masturbation show and literally if I was fair skinned I would have been blue all like my whole face would have been blue like did she just say she's going to be on my show talking about <laughs> masturbation did she say this in front of a whole lot of people I was literally like embarrassed right but I, I talked about that on the show and, and after the show, when she made it okay to say self-pleasuring is not a bad thing, right? It's you pleasuring mm -hmm. yourself. It's a good thing, right? When she made it okay after that show, now I say it all the time. Now, when I say it to people, right, they now, I can see the discomfort in their face. And I say, I, I used to feel that same way before the show. And that's why you should listen to the show, because it's going to talk about those things. Because some things, when we talk about mental health roadblocks and sex, right, some things we've been taught or haven't been taught. And then the media or and now social media has given us and we have decided to we're either going to have a roadblocks for that or we're going to think if we do it one or two times a week now is an addiction and it's a problem and I shouldn't be doing exactly. it. Exactly. And so and I shouldn't be doing it. And I shouldn't be doing it. And, and so, so your friend, your friend that you your friend that you were talking about before, same thing, you know, with these going over there and having this sex with women. Mm -hmm. You know, some think some people think multiple what do we associate with having multiple partners? If you mm -hmm. have multiple partners, you're considered a what? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say the slang word, but everybody yeah. knows. You gotta say. Okay. Okay, but that, that that's my <laughs> yeah. whole. Thing. Yeah, I understand. And, and I think what we're talking about, what, what we're what we actually shift, uh, shifted on here is something that's been is is being sex positive, meaning mm -hmm. just being positive about sex. Is mm -hmm. sex sex has a lot of negative connotations attached to it in our society, whereas you know people are now coming forward and they're being more sex positive, mm -hmm. meaning sex is okay. Mm -hmm. especially if it's between two consensual adults and There's especially nothing if it's self-pleasuring right and especially if it's self-pleasuring and right? self-pleasuring because I mean, if you don't know how bother to pleasure nobody yourself, you I know. if you don't know how to pleasure yourself yeah. how the hell am i supposed to listen well that part that's you what i said on the show that's exactly, what I said. Good. that's exactly what i said i said that's why we have young girls busting windows out of cars because the guys get them the feeling and they feeling like but okay 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 i digress and that's why we got off that <laughs> so let me just get back on it so so mental health roadblocks and sex and men so let's talk about church about about church hurt right or things that, yes. that men um were told in church or have experienced in church or saw their pastors do or say in church and how those things affect their sexual output, right? The, the church hurt or just being in the church. And I say church hurt because a lot of us, you know, have gone through church hurt. And this is why we do certain things or don't do certain things because the church say do it. And if we feel like we don't do it now, 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 now we're disobeying God, we're disobeying the Bible, dis disobeying the scriptures. But then we know there's whispers in the background that the, but the pastor may be doing these things, right? So how does church hurt with, with men, right? Mental health roadblocks and sex uh, for men. How does that play into their sexual being um, today? Yeah, so I think what we're talking about is cognitive dissonance. And so and you're being you say, told- and when, you, and when you say cognitive, Dick, Dick, this say it again. I'm going to define it for you. Okay, Cognitive dissonance. You. Dissonance. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's basically when you have two thoughts that are in conflict with each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so you you have on this you have, and I think this is uh you know this could be something that you're you're the person you were talking to is dealing with. You have this one thing in church that you're being told in regards to being being holy and 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 being respectful and and being monogamous but then you have this 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 image of how we're supposed to be as western men okay so, how, so it's when the people have the good angel and, and the bad angel and the bad angel. oh okay yes. okay 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 yes. go ahead, go ahead, yes. go ahead. very good analogy very go good ahead. analogy so all of us have this this cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> Uh, but how church comes in more specifically is if you follow that demon, you know, now it's a part of yourself that's going to be damned for eternity. You know what I mean? So that really, that takes a toll on you. Why are, yeah. why am I doing this to hurt myself? Yeah. 
You know what I mean? And yeah. and, and and so people have you know you you you're battling these two sides, and and so uh, any any negative thoughts you have about yourself mm-hmm. hurt you. You know, can be traumatizing towards you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because it, 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 in the media, it, in that point, as soon as you have that negative thought about yourself, mm-hmm. you're you're sort of berating yourself. You're looking mm-hmm. down on yourself, and this again goes into the you know wrapping it around to the beginning about allowing yourself your own grace, allowing yourself mm-hmm. compassion, allowing mm-hmm. yourself forgiveness. Allowing that you don't know everything, and that sometimes we do, we're doing the best that we can, and so yeah, with church hurt, you you, you it, it, it usually form it uh, in regards to um, what happens is is we take those beliefs that we hear in church and we internalize them personally, hmm. you know, and and if you already have some issues regarding your self esteem or insecurity and uh, and, and you and you, for some reason, determine your self-worth by your sexual prowess, mm-hmm. uh, it's going to impact you in a negative manner. Mm-hmm. And so this is why it's very important that um, your validation comes from within and is not ne- and is not necessarily associated with all external factors. Mm-hmm. Wow. But that's but 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 Roger, now, good luck, because, you know, self-worth. <laughs> <laughs> self worth, self worth should come from within, and without these external things, good luck because you know everything that we are like comes from, um, from within. You know, you know we often say me and from Martin, external. Say, yeah, we often say you know you everyone's born with this blank piece of paper, right? And all things are kind of written on there. Of course, we know DNA comes into play, but but. But the external even helps to shape and form that DNA to how you act and react to certain situations. I I totally agree with you, and I'm not discounting it. But what's the missing component is is that there is an internal there is an internal reality. Mm. And remember, we talked about we talked about um, there's an emotional or a, 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 there like there's a physical body, there's an emotional body, and you have mm. to just like you have to train that physical body. You have to train that emotional body, and mm-hmm. so that is what that that is what's going on as we get older. When we're younger, yes, we get a lot of external validation from our parents, from our peer group, from our community, and everything like that. And nothing is wrong with that at all. But when we get older, you notice that that external validation falls off. You don't receive it as much anymore. Well, yeah, like whatever. <laughs> Right. People are like, you grown now, you do what you yeah. do. You I'm grown, you grown, as I say. <laughs> exactly. And and then some people are able to make that transition. They are able to make that transition and they are able to start internally validating their self. Now, mm-hmm. it's still not to say that you don't receive external validation, but you have to have that internal validation point, uh, a component. And you have to you have to build it up and you have to keep building it up and and and, and uh until it gets to a point where it rivals the external validation that you've been receiving all your life. And it, it's not an easy, it's not mm. an easy task, but it's a necessary task if you mm. want to be successful in anything mm. that you want mm. in your life. Because mm. at some point, you're going to have to take your own discernment over all the things that you've heard in the past. Mm. And mm. part of that is realizing that you are okay as who you are and mm. that your uniqueness is worthy of being expressed regardless of what anybody says because mm. you exist. That's a whole nother show right there. Just that part right there. Like, no, seriously, Roger, that was like so good. That is like, like a whole nother show. And so when we get out of these men series, so be clear, uh, Roger, and I hate to be on just on your schedule so much, but we literally just need to bring you back to just even talk about that, um, that validation like how do we tap yes. into that because like you said some people get it and some people don't get it so some people you know um, last night my daughter and i uh, did a show uh together and you know the the uh the the therapist we were on we were on the therapist show last night and so she said to her like you know i know that your your peers at your age is is who you who you're looking to please not not so much mom and dad right and so even and then i have a friend who's in education right and she's been in education a long time and she has often said with her kids and my child and other people's kids that and at this age they care about one thing 
what their peers think, right? So what you're saying is- I true. disagree. I think there's some cognitive dissonance going on with them too. What ah. their peers say versus what their parents say. Ah. Now, I, know, I, I will give you that their peers probably have a little more weight, but re regardless, I bet you they always see their parent on their shoulder ah. speaking. And that, that's why it's very important. You, you, you are your child's inner voice. Mm. And the reason why you know this and every adult know this is because a lot of the things that you're having issues with today mm -hmm. probably were things that you were taught when you were younger. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that your parents are bad or anything like mm -hmm. that, because they're not the ones here today. So yeah. you're the one that's keeping that dialogue going, going in your head yeah. and it's up yeah. for you to reverse it yeah. or totally delete it at all. Yeah. Yeah. When you realize that an imprint, as we call it, or some subconscious thoughts are are, are are bubbling up mm -hmm. that is your opportunity to change it and yeah. when do you realize that when you're being triggered like what we talked before when you find yourself angry in a meeting or when you find yourself or let's go back on to our topic when you find yourself not being able to get aroused like you used to that's an opportunity for you to get your growth right mm -hmm. that's what is going on do your own exploration maybe mm -hmm. go talk to a therapist go talk to your doctor and then do the things that you need to do. Mm -hmm. Now it's not an instant process because you could you could hone it down right to exactly where the dysfunction or the symptoms started and everything like that mm -hmm. and even understand how they started. But you still now you have to make that practice from that point mm -hmm. in order to get to a healthier mind state. Yeah, I I totally I totally agree. I, I am like that with with like like you said my, my mom's voice even been here is that whenever I, uh, cause you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in grad school and I do like a million things, but I do not feel like I can let my hair down and have a good time unless I finished all my work, right? And if I'm hanging out and I have some school work to do, I can hear my mom saying, but you are hanging out having a good time and you haven't finished your schoolwork. You shouldn't even be able to go out. Like I don't go out with comfort. Like, you know, I told you we started the show. This is the last thing I have to do before the weekend. I finished my schoolwork. I finished my work work. I've done everything so I can have a free a weekend. And when I mean free, I mean mental space free. Because my mom said, don't hang out. When I, my, my mom said, you can't do something unless you did your schoolwork growing up, right? And then when I was in college, she was like, why Why are you in Atlanta? Because I was at Tuskegee, right? Why are you in Atlanta and you're supposed to be? Why, how are you studying if you're in Atlanta, right? So even right now at my age, I still hear her when I have to, when I want to do something and I haven't finished my schoolwork. So it's like, let me finish everything so my mental space can be free. And that's the thing that she told me. And so this is, let's connect it back to this whole idea that we're talking about with men's health. And this is that that uh, mind-body connection is yeah. talking about. Your mind is telling you that you have to have be all these particular things versus what your body is actually telling you right now. Yeah. now. And it's like, hey, we're getting older, we're getting this. And sometimes you conflate these things, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, it's really just you're getting older, but your mind has put all, it's put all these other other uh, other ideas into your head as to what's mm -hmm. really happening to you, mm -hmm. and so you have to you have to tease all that stuff apart, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's why I, I suggested that you know the more experience that you have, or the more exposure that this man ha has with uh, sexual activity, the more he can tease apart those things, the more he can see what's reality versus what's in his mind, so that he can reconnect his mind and body, so that they can work in sync with each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And so, and so, and so Roger, cause, cause I know our time is, is drawing near and I told you we we're going to be here long, but the, but the one thing I want you to talk about before we uh, kind of wrap up and I let you go on about your oh, wonderful weekend after me taking <laughs> the time twice, right? I but, am having but, a wonderful weekend with you. We can do this. You yeah, know? no. Yeah. So, so we, so, we need so, a live audience. <laughs> yeah, no, we, no, we, no, we're actually going to do that. I talked to the therapist last night. Like, I'm like, I, I'm going to put them two together and I don't know how this is going to work with it. I'm just going to have to make sure that I don't say nothing and inject myself in it because then it could be like, she need to sit on the sofa. We need to have a sofa or a walking path, right? So yeah, absolutely. But that's, that's literally, part of it, right? That's I part of the it. conversation with her. But when we talk about this um, mental health roadblocks and sex, right, do you think that men's sexual proudness, right, had something to do with, listen, their mental help roadblock in sex because listen so a long time ago I was listening to a um, 1380 because you know their talk right it, it's, it's been some years but I've never forgotten what the lady said and she said that sometimes and we and she was talking about black men 
because again, that's what our show is geared for, even though it's for everybody, right? She said, sometimes when black men have nothing else, right? They may not have a job. They may not, they may be living at home with mom, but the one thing that they have is their sexual proudness, right? And so they sometimes uh, displace that in being with a lot of ladies, having a lot of uh, sex here and there, um, because they feel like this is the only thing that I can control in this entity is my sexual proudness, right? So I'm asking you with that thought process of what this uh, therapist said on a, on, a, on a talk show, right? Is this mental health roadblocks uh, uh, part of them in this sexual proudness? Uh, I think that's a good question, and that may apply to some men. I don't know that it applies to everything, you know. I, 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 yeah, I definitely, and, and this, it, but it goes back to what we were talking about again, mm -hmm. as far as uh, what your background is and the beliefs that you were told. What mm -hmm. what angels are sitting, uh, what angels or what demons are sitting on your shoulders and mm -hmm. talking to you. Mm -hmm. And yes, there, I'm sure there are cases where there are many men that rape themselves by the number of, you know, the notches on their belt mm -hmm. or, you know, how many women. Say, no, right, uh, right, right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but. Or, 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 as, the case, or, or how many men or however many like sexual partners they have, we'll say. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But um, I, it's not, it's not the, it's, it's not the status quo per se, you mm -hmm. know, because other men, each of us are unique and each of our experiences are unique, how we grow and how we develop, right? Mm -hmm. So what what might be the cause for one man's uh, sexual uh, impotence or mental health robot blocks mm -hmm. may not be the same for the other man. You know, it's mm -hmm. not one size fits all mm -hmm. by any mm -hmm. means. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and as we say, it, you know, as we've shown it, it's just very complex. We could go down many different rabbit holes. There, mm -hmm. there are just some there are just so uh, many things in life that can occur. Mm -hmm. uh, different for different men mm -hmm. and each of those could attribute to uh, a sexual health issue mm -hmm. or they could contribute to your success in a particular mm -hmm. scenario mm -hmm. right well, we so can kind of agree yeah. i'm sorry i'm i'm, I'm sorry because what you just said it made me think because we can kind of agree that most men in most households were were first of all given given this entity uh, or this thought process of sex early, right? That this is something they should be doing, right? And and, and doing this was a part of them be in, going into their manhood, if you would, if you will, right? And and that, and now they've taken this into adult life. And, be, and because, you know, I, I think, and, and, you, and you're the therapist, so you can help me out. I think that men have more confidence, if you will, when it comes to sex, as opposed to women, because they start, they're, they're given this at a young age. The men are saying, you go out here and you have sex, right? And you get a girlfriend, you have sex. The women are saying, don't you go and have sex and don't you do this, right? But men are just kind of given different things. I know I have two brothers and I know what my mom told me about sex versus what she told them and how she kind of pushed them and how she pulled me back was exactly what I'm saying, right? And so, uh, yeah. So I, you know, again, I just don't want to. I don't want to generalize and just say. Well, we don't mean. Like, we don't mean all because all. I'm a scientist. All, yeah, all yeah. All, but and I, the majority. But I, don't, I don't. I don't know the. I don't have the numbers on the probability of how many men were acculturated like that, or were, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or, or or have that mindset or that view. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. I don't. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't. Say, I can't. I can't say that, and I don't know that. I don't know that every man that has succumbed to that view or was raised in those similar ways uh, has mental health roadblocks to this day. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. have to be, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the cause mm -hmm. of somebody's sexual health issues. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we want to be very careful about that because you'll run down. The, that's what I'm saying is it's really very specific and you have to listen because you could have, you know, me and my brothers, we're uh, raised all in the same household, just, uh, you know, and different things like that. But mm -hmm. they're straight. I'm gay. So clearly we have totally different aspects mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of what sexuality yeah. and even probably sex is, you know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. it, it, it's really just hard to say. It's mm -hmm. really, it's, it's really hard to say that mm -hmm. causation does not equal correlation. And so oh, that's a primary, okay. that's a primary tenet that we as therapists and psychiatrists like to stand behind is that 
just because these things correlate doesn't necessarily mean that that's the causation of it. And you mm -hmm. have to be very careful. Uh, there's this term called confirmation bias, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. what happens is, 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 is basically that you have evidence of something. Mm -hmm. And so then you, you find things to confirm that evidence to, to strengthen your bias about it. Ah, yeah, thing. I like that. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful with that because that statement, um, and I'm not saying that you're doing this intentionally or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it could sort of be confirmation bias. We can look to that, hey, this man was told that he had to have so many women mm -hmm. in order to feel like a man and mm -hmm. that how many and that all men are told this. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, these these 10 men have told me this. So that proves it. Mm -hmm. Understood. And uh -huh. it, it, uh -huh. it does. And then and then and then and take it even a step further. All these men have now as they age, they're not getting as many women as they used to. So now they're having a sex issue. Mm -hmm. And it's attributed to the fact because they were told that they were supposed to have so many women and they can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. that I, like, I don't I like, know that. Uh, see, see, Roger, I, li I, I like that. And I, and I like that you introduced us to uh, confirmation bias, right? And so you know, I, I often tell people I'm public health, but I'm a, I'm a scientist, right? And so, yeah. like, as you said, when you say all, then then it automatically make mm, the statement's wrong, right? But when I give uh, some factual based ev evidence of saying, you know, the majority of the people, I'm I, as you say, I'm talking to, you know, the majority of the men that I've experienced in college or experienced yes. growing up, and as I experienced in my adult life, right? So the majority of this, and and, th and these are a lot of men, um, the majority of this population or this. Um, um, evidence base of this cert of people, right? This this is what they basically uh, have have um, either said in their in their in verbalized or in their actions. What would make me have a conversation about what was taught, right? Um, with the men and, and 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 what they're giving versus what women and and my own you know example. But I really appreciate the fact. I like that you said confirmation bias because. And let me let me say something real quick. <laughs> let me say something on this real quick because I I agree with you that there could be a lot of men that hold that belief. What I want to, the, the cause and the correlation is that doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean that's why you're, you're having a mental health roadblock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean, but I, I, I think a lot of people might attribute that to that. Oh, and we have to be careful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We understood. have to be careful of that uh -huh. because you could, you know, especially it, it, if you're trying to get help. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. there could be some other issues that you're just not aware of or even mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, mental health just, you know, it's so interesting that uh, how we can be triggered or, or what can trigger us. We, mm -hmm. we you just you just don't know. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it, it, we know that that is taught a lot. We see it on our commercials, on mm -hmm. our entertainment mm -hmm. and everything like that. You know, mm -hmm. there is an archetype of what a man is supposed to be mm -hmm. in our culture. Yeah. You know, yeah. or or just in general, worldwide. Yeah. We, we, we know that caveman yeah. knock them over the head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you absolutely. know, so, so that's very common and we've all seen that image. So mm -hmm. definitely that image is out there, but I can't mm -hmm. correlate that that that's the reason for every man's mental health roadblock. Mm -hmm. Or one of the reasons. But I, I like I like causation. I like that what I've gotten from these um two uh, sessions, I'm gonna call them. Um, of you being on the show is that what I what I really like about your form of a a, a therapy or or coaching or is that you believe that all things I are multi-dimensional, right? And that mm -hmm. is not just one cause, but there are several things because that is really how you resolve is this, to get to the several things that gets to this one action that you do. And then when you understand that there are several things that causes your action, then you're better able to resolve. So I like that approach. Not, not everyone takes that approach now. Just let you know that you are different in, different in who I speak with, who takes that approach. And I really and truly, and you know, you hear different things and that's how you decide on what, you know, attracts you, right? So I really like that you are clear that most things are, are, are multi-dimensional into what, especially when it comes to your mental health. So um, Roger will be a great person to uh, go and, you know, talk to and coach, or as he said, uh, if you watched the last show, not necessarily sit on the sofa, but walk down the street and however he uh, talks to you to coach you. But in closing, Roderick, if awesome. men are having, because I told you I'm going to keep it on, I'm, I'm trying, I keep uh, it on my phone, like this is my time. So in closing, 
men that are having mental health roadblocks, right? Mm -hmm. With sex from either church hurt, from religious teaching, from social media, from fear or freedom, right? Um, what would you say to those men in closing, how they should move past? And I think you've said it a lot, but I'm, you know, in the show, but how do they move past these roadblocks that they may have that is causing them either to not to have sex or to maybe have, uh, maybe do things that are causing dysfunction in their lives? Like, how do they move past these mental health roadblocks, if you will, mm -hmm. and, and sex? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, and thank you again for having me, and I've really enjoyed this, um, and I look forward to talking with you again on some other ask, uh, other other topics, and maybe we even continue with this one for a little bit. Yeah, you know, okay. it okay. is com it is complex. Yeah. Um, I, I would say I would say show yourself some grace, and you show yourself mm -hmm. some grace by uh, understanding that we don't come in knowing how to have sex. We don't come into life knowing these things that we've learned these things. And, but that in, is, that in itself is the key. If you learn something, you can earn, learn it, or you can learn new ways. So allow yourself, allow yourself to, to realize that this is no longer working for me. I, I knew I was trying the best that I can, or this is what I was taught. And now allow yourself to go into a, a new direction. Don't hold yourself. Don't hold yourself at that state. You know, mm -hmm. you did those things. Those things are in the past. You can't change those experiences, but you can change. You can't change the past, but you can decide how you're going to go into the future. And so not only just allow yourself grace, give yourself an opportunity to experience something in a new way. Mm. Give yourself the mm. opportunity to experience something in a new way. And so what that means is you're going to have to allow yourself, you're going to have to distance yourself from beliefs and you distance yourself from beliefs that you had in the past by, by challenging them, mm -hmm. challenging those beliefs. Remember we talked about confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. you, you, so all that stuff that you were using to prove that this stuff is right, look at the other end and see if that stuff matches up. Does it, it, what's, what's the stuff that disproves it, mm -hmm. you know, so challenge, mm -hmm. challenge those beliefs and mm -hmm. see if that stuff holds up, mm -hmm. allow yourself to try new and different things. Yeah. Um, in turn, and that's that internal validation. Yeah. Know that regardless of what you try, you're still a man. Yeah. Regardless of what you try or what you want to experience that, that you're still a man and that you get to go, go to explore and experiment with different things, regardless of what you were taught before. Yeah. And, you know, you know, and I just bring it back again to that. Have some compassion for yourself. Have some show grace. Grace. I show really like that. I, yeah, I see. I say, I see. I see. That's why you talk to to, to the therapists because they give you nice words. Because I'll say, stop being so hard on yourself. That's what I say, right? But I really like the show grace because grace just automatically settles you, right? Um, because yes. that's how we've always heard that word, right? Uh, show grace to yourself. I, I mean, I really like that. But I, you know, I really like when you said experience something in a new way, right? That's how I am with music in closing. I, I, you know, I, music takes me right back to the moment, to the minute that something happened, just mm -hmm. like, just like uh, aromas do, right? It takes me right back to the moment, to the minute. But sometimes with music, I don't want the memory to be what the memory is. So I need to experience that in a different way. Let me experience this in a different way, right? So I, I literally change, I, 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 I'm like, I'm going to hear this song differently because I don't want what was attached to the song. And it's not that it's anything bad, it's that it was yesterday, right? I don't want that attachment to this song. So now I want to experience this song differently, right? I want to have a new attachment to that song. Yes, so exactly. I'm always experiencing something in a new way. I like that you said that. I like that you said learn and uh, unlearn new, new things. So, yeah, these, so experience these, sex in a new way experience sex in a new way right see i like I, listen again again roger you know we could be on here all day but you know i'm gonna let you go because you don't been on here my time <laughs> thank you so much let everyone know how if they want to come and talk to you in detail about something specific man or woman um that you where where they can reach you give them your number give it to them slowly so they can write it down and again mm -hmm. um the information will be on uh, is on our, our website black pink uh, org and also let them know your social media and how they can reach you. So as you see that Roderick is a uh, well thought out 
uh, therapist and who will help you to get to the bottom of things by using this multi-dimensional approach, which I really, really, uh, really like, right? So let, let everybody know how to uh, get in contact with you. And if they want to schedule a session, you know, say Black Pink sent you and um, schedule a session with you. Uh, yes, and, and thank you. Now you're going to have me uh, update my stuff. Now I got to put multi-dimensional approach. Yeah, there, so yeah, I appreciate exactly. That. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, that, that, that quantum, that's that quantum counseling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. All right. But you can reach me. Uh, my Instagram is R-Y Watkins, W-A-T-K-I-N-S. Uh, my phone number uh, to my uh, private practice is 678-622-5505. Or you can also Google me at Roderick Y. Watkins, LPC, and um, you'll see me on Psychology Today, Find a Therapist. You heard what he said. He said Google me. <laughs> <laughs> we in the money over here at the Rhythm Notes of Health. He said Google me. You'll find me, right? Make sure you, make sure you put an E. In his name, and I'm going to correct that um, before before it. Oh yeah, Roderick. R -E -E I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to correct that. Make sure you put that E in his name when you're looking up, or you're not going to find him. And um, thank you, thank you, Roderick. I yeah, I, I will be reaching back out because we're going to do like a few things together because I'm so excited yeah. with this new multi-dimensional approach. Right, that's a T-shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just need to get credit when you when you, when you get the term. Right. They call it eclectic. They call it eclectic, but yeah, that multi-dimensional counseling. I oh, like it's gonna that. gonna give us a new word, but okay, we're gonna exactly. say multi-dimensional. Keep it simple. Yeah, that. but thank you, I, thank you so much. You have yourself a wonderful weekend, and we will connect soon. Uh, um, thank you, thank you, Roger. Thank you for uh, coming on, to, agreeing to come on twice because you know I get in trouble with you guys because I, you know, I, I, mean, I just have a good time with the guy because I'm I'm just a health educator and wanting to help help educate everyone but thank you for just giving your time and your service to come on and i'm hoping that people are going to reach out and come to you because literally and truly i feel like i need to make an appointment like, let me make me an appointment be first like she i'm not in here as black pink and rhythm notes i'm in here as really and truly <laughs> me like, yeah. but thank you roger thank you thank you so much for your for your time yeah, you, you can have come a good and weekend. Walk with me anytime. Okay, I will. I'm okay. Remember, you said that I will. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so freaking good. But I'm not going to take a a long time, as you see over my shoulder. It's uh, Musiki scales. Musiki's, Musiki's gonna have to pay me some of his uh, streaming uh, money in a minute because I'm always like promoting him, but he's Tuskegee. And so since we were doing a part two, and so I wanted to go back and bring the kaleidoscope, kaleidoscopic universe song back, which is my favorite off this um, off of his new album, uh, West West Africa. Check him out. He is Musiki Scales on all social media um, at M as in Mary A U. S K I scales S C A L E S. He's Musiki scales on all um, social media outlets. This is Kaleidoscopic Universe, the whole entire album, which you probably have heard on my podcast right now. It's really, really good. It's doing really, really well. And I and I and I always say, thank me later. That is. Um, that's uh, Musiki, Sk Musiki Scales. He is our soul note. He is the way that I'm seeing breathe through it. Um, this is uh, this this series, this men series, is uh, so good. And we just in the third show, but it's not going to go as long as the women's show. But we do have some other shows that we need to talk about, um, it's, uh, like what our their budging waistline we want to talk about why that happens what can we do uh to stop that and make sure that you are subscribing to the rhythm notes of health so that you are able to just get the podcast as, as they come out you have to remember to go and say oh let me go and uh download them Roderick was so good. You know, we talked a lot about multidimensional and, um, you know, what I like, one of the things, other things that I like that Roderick talks about is showing grace with yourself and experiencing something new, right? Changing that thought process 
process in your brain that what we've been told and how we view things to now view it differently. So I, I really and truly like Roderick, but I really like having a therapist on as well as the doctors, but the therapy because they help us to connect how we act, what we do, how we react, right? And he also said that when, you, when you're in a situation where you have some discomfort or something uncomforting, look at that as a growth opportunity. So when things happen to bring you discomfort, it's a growth opportunity. So mental health roadblocks and sex with men, oh my gosh, please make sure you give us feedback and let us know you know, how you're feeling about these podcasts. Make sure you're subscribing. We're blackpink.org on all social media. Um, the Rhythm Notes of Health. Uh, remember, we repeat what we don't repair. When life moves fast and your mind does too, remember to breathe. It will get you through. More importantly, your race and where you live should not determine whether you live. Persistent patience, and perseverance. Do those things. Remember to breathe five times a day, which is very important. You don't know how many times you stop breathing. Just breathe consistently, rhythmatically five times, five times a day. It'll help distress you. It'll help with anxiety. Um, my name is Kai. I enter. I am the rhythm notes of public health and I'm the soul of public health. And this has been a great day. Have a great weekend, great holiday weekend. Stay, stay safe, mask up. Um, and um, if you haven't been vaccinated, stay in. And if you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. That's all. Bye.